All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about the scientific concept of waves. So uh, obviously, when you think the word wave, there's a few things you can think of like ocean waves, which actually are waves or like waving your hand to someone, right? But in science, uh, what we're gonna talk about with waves is that they're an oscillation. There's a few important points here. First is that waves are an oscillation. And what that means is just a repetitive motion. So if we look at some of these examples down here, right? This motion here is repeating itself. This motion here is repeating itself, okay? So the first aspect of a wave is that it's an oscillation. The next aspect is that it involves a transfer of energy. So uh, this wave here, right, it's transferring energy. That, that's essentially what, this, what a wave does, is it transfers energy. There's energy of motion here with this wave and it's transferring as we go around here. Same thing here, right? We're transferring energy with the motion of this wave, right? So it's an oscillation, involves a transfer of energy, and it propagates. And what, when we talk about waves, the, the word propagate means just to travel through uh, whatever space or mass it's moving through, right? So certain waves can move through empty space and certain waves can't. Um, so a wave that is traveling through something, be it a mass of liquid, solid, whatever it might be, the, the space that the, the the matter that the wave is traveling through is called the medium that the wave is propagating in all right so the, the medium is the substance that the wave is traveling through so most waves do need a medium to transfer through sound waves are a great example of this they can't transfer through empty space so if you were to uh, make some uh, noise in a vacuum not not a vacuum cleaner but in a, in a vacuum with no air in it if, if there were a noise to be made in there it would make no sound if you were to like click two things together in a vacuum they would not make sound because sound waves can't travel through empty space okay so most waves do need a medium but the one type that doesn't are electromagnetic waves all right so this would be uh examples of this would be microwaves radio waves um, infrared ray, w waves, all of these different types of electromagnetic waves, those do not require a medium to travel through, but most other waves do. Okay, so the important parts with waves, they're an oscillation or repetitive motion. They involve a transfer of energy and they propagate or travel through uh, the space or medium that they're traveling through. Whatever the stuff is that the wave is traveling through, that's called the medium. Okay, so when we're looking at these waves, there's a couple different types. There's transverse waves and longitudinal waves. So transverse waves, the particles move perpendicular to the motion of the wave. So if we look at this wave here and we were to describe the direction of the motion, the motion of the wave is this way. And then when it comes back, the motion of the wave is this way, right? So this is a transverse wave because the particles are moving perpendicular to that wave, All right? So if we look at what happens to the particles, in this little rope or whatever we have here. If we look at what happens to the particles as we move along, right? The particles are kind of jumping up and down, right? Jumping up and down. This is perpendicular to the direction of the wave, right? In order for this uh, this disturbance, right? Because we have this, this straight line that eventually is disturbed in this waveform, right? So the particles are moving up and down, whereas the wave itself is traveling side to side oops sorry side to side right so if the particles are moving in a direction that's perpendicular or a 90 degree angle to the direction of the wave that means that it's a transverse wave the counterpart to transverse waves would be longitudinal waves so longitudinal waves the particles are moving in a direction parallel to the motion of the wave so if you compress a spring or a slinky like this and send a wave through it, right, the particles are being compressed horizontally and stretched out horizontally, and then the wave itself is moving to the left here. right? So the, the motion of the particles going side to side here is parallel to the motion of the wave. right? The wave is moving in the same plane as the motion of the particles. All right, so with longitudinal waves, there's a couple of important vocab terms compressions are the part where the particles are squished together or compressed so all these parts here where we have the particles being squished together those are called compressions and then rarefactions 
are where the particles are stretched out. So they're, they're, uh, whenever uh, one part gets squished together, another part has to get uh, stretched out. So here we have stretching, stretching, stretching. These are called rarefactions, and compressions are the part where we're squished together. Okay, so a few properties of waves. This is an example of a transverse wave. Some of the vocab terms that we need to know with waves. If we have a wave like this that comes to a peak, that's called a crest, or you could also call it a peak. The opposite of a peak, this would be a maximum, right? The opposite of one of these maxima or peaks or crests would be a trough or a minimum at the bottom. Another uh, property of the wave is the amplitude. The amplitude is basically how high up and then how high down the wave goes. So the amplitude would be measured as, whoops, the amplitude would be measured as this or this, right? So the amplitude is just from the baseline position or the equilibrium position, how high up and how high down does the wave go, all right? So to reiterate this position, this neutral position, is called equilibrium, or you know, it's the baseline of the wave where it's not uh, at a point where it's moving. And the last part of the wave, uh, the last uh, vocab term we need to know here is the wavelength. So the wavelength tells us how long it takes, or how, how much distance is covered by one full completion of the wave. So here it marks from top to top, right, when we go down to the bottom and then come back up to the point that we started at, right? That makes one completion of the wave and that's how we measure a wavelength. We could also measure from here to here, right? Because if we go up and down and then come back up, that would be one wavelength as well because we've done one full completion of the wave. Be careful because this, if we were to measure from, let's say here to here, even though we got back to the point we started at, this is not one full wavelength because we didn't complete the wave fully with all of its parts, right? We only looked at the top part of the wave here and not the bottom part. In order for the wavelength to be correct, you need to measure one full completion of the wave. So this would be one full completion when we go up and then down and then come back up again, right? That would be one full completion, all right? So that measures the wavelength, this distance here from one from the start of, of a wave to the end of its one full completion. Okay, and the last thing about waves is frequency. So the frequency tells us how quickly it completes a cycle. So frequency and wavelength are essentially opposites because if something has a long wavelength, let's say we had a wave like this, actually we can look at these two examples that I put there, right? If this has a long wavelength, right, one wave completion would be roughly like there, or something like this, we're completing one wavelength here. This has a high frequency because it's completing quickly a lot of uh, completions of this wave. Whereas this has a lower frequency because it's, com it's taking longer to complete one completion, one full iteration or completion of the wave. So the longer the wavelength, the lower the frequency, right? This has a low frequency because we have a long wavelength. But this one that has a high frequency or is completing really quickly, that has a short wavelength, okay? So wavelength and frequency are always going to be inversely proportional. So the bigger the wavelength, the smaller the frequency, and the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency, all right? Thanks for watching this video on waves, and I'll see you in the next one.